Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Knowledge Sharing Chitran uh, workshop series, Entrepreneurial Project Management, organized by the Institution of Indian Sri Lanka, the Entrepreneurship Forum. So the, this forum is ex especially for encouraging engineers in multidisciplinary se uh, sectors to become engineering entrepreneurs. So we have a series of workshops, online knowledge sharing sessions, and many more uh, uh, education uh, and uh, professional uh, support systems to support and uplift your career in engineering entrepreneurship. So join with us with our entrepreneurship forum and also uh, share your knowledge and experience and grow as an engineering entrepreneur. So today we have a very special uh, resource person to share entrepreneurial project management with you. At the meantime, uh, we have our co-chair as a moder moderator uh, to assist you during this workshop because this will be a kind of a hands-on experience to you, right? So at the meantime, if you have any questions, right, you can put it into the chat box and you can also interact with us uh, sharing your thoughts and if any uh, difficulties or issues you wanted to uh, mention you can actually put into the chat box so we will have a faq session so we will be clarify your doubts and support you to have a better understanding in project management for your entrepreneurial activities the purpose of this uh, knowledge sharing workshop is to give you kind of a uh, experience and also support you to start your entrepreneurial activities to become uh, become an entrepreneur in engineering sector or any multidisciplinary sections and uh, to support you in this uh, discipline. So uh, let me introduce the uh, speaker's profile. And at the meantime, I welcome everyone to this uh, knowledge sharing session and welcome engineer Madhava. Thank you. Yes. So I will introduce his uh, profile. Actually, engineer Madhav Herat has is a active member of the Entrepreneurship Forum at the Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka. He has a multifaceted education background with professional qualifications in engineering, business management, and project management, with over 15 years of professional experience in leading corporates and multinationals in Sri Lanka, including overseas assignments. A unique blend of experience in engineering, project management and services in telecom industry and academic sectors. So I think there are many things and aspects that we have to learn from his uh, expertise and tacit knowledge. So this is a very good uh, opportunity for everyone to learn from his uh, expertise. So, and he has, uh, Specialties in program and project management, consultation, lecturing, and machine learning because he's a reading for a, a PhD uh, in energy uh, disaggregation using machine learning. So he has many more uh, new knowledge areas, and it's a very good uh, opportunity for everyone. So let's uh, take this opportunity to learn. And I think our Engineer Suresh Dharmaratna, the co-chair for the this session, and he will be the next chairperson for the Entrepreneurship Forum in 2021-2022 session. So, Engineer Suresh Dharmaratna will be guiding you from this onwards. It's over to you, Engineer Suresh. Thank you, Engineer Jasmine. Uh, so, it is uh, welcome you all and good evening to all. And this will, session will be very important session for all the entrepreneurs uh, because project management is a vast area and very dynamic area and very important area in considering of any uh, discipline. Uh, so today, uh, this uh, session, almost a workshop, will be give you more informative uh, insights about project management, how we can put those knowledge and uh, skills to the uh, domain of entrepreneur entrepreneurship. This is very important. So in this uh, session, engineer Madhav Herat, will guide you guide you through several uh, areas uh, first he will explain how what the importance of project management and what important project management itself and then la later he will guide you through 
uh, project life cycle and how it's affected to business phases. And also uh, when you are crafting about your business strategy, he will give tools today. He will certainly give you some very valuable tools uh, how you can craft is using project management tool, uh, expert tools and knowledge. And uh, also when you're planning your business, uh, you will get much more tools uh, from, from project management aspect. So uh, let's start uh, uh, for uh, engineer mother. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, okay, before we, we go to what project management give us for the entrepreneur, the mm -hmm. entrepreneur uh, domain, what really the project management is? What really the, uh, this project management mean actually? Okay, thank you, uh, Jasmine. Thank you, Suresh. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to share whatever I have gathered throughout my life to share with the great audience today. Thank you very much. And I'll be answering the question in a quite a different manner. So then uh, today we're going to talk about different blend of project managers, so-called the entrepreneurial project managers. So what is this entrepreneurial project management? Before jumping to there, so I want to answer the question given by the Suresh. A project management or a project. What is a project? So maybe different things come to your mind when I say project. So what other things come to your mind in simple way? Huh? These are some of things, you know? So when we're going around the Colombo and the other suburbs areas, today the construction is going. Different buildings are being constructed. Huh? So then some people think that this is the project. Okay, can be, yeah, this is a project. Okay, then maybe a group of people get together and they're going to design a building. Maybe architects are there, the quantity surveys are there, civil engineers are there, MEP engineers are there. All together, they're going to develop a design a building. So that's also kind of a, a project, simple. Then also a well-known area, which is uh, software development. Then people can get together and uh, start developing software. Or maybe individual or a group of people, maybe virtual teams. They are going to develop a software. We're going to have a client. So the client is going to give us a, um, his or her or the particular organization requirement. Based on that, we're going to develop a, a software. This is also kind of a, a project. Then maybe this kind of thing also we may can think as a project. We are design and build of aircraft or maybe a couple of different flavors of aircraft. So this also may be come to your mind when you're going to think about projects. So then, Simply as said, so it can be a, like a construction, it can be a, maybe a design of a building, a design and development of a software, and or maybe a design and development of a, this kind of aircraft. But now the, the sense is quite different. Marriage will be a project, uh, little bit different. Now the, the, whatever we had in our mind was now a little bit uh, uh, shaking here and there. So I'll explain why this, I consider it as a project. And also a war. Don't miss like a, like a don't mess up with why I put the marriage first and second the vote. There'll be no such a relationship between that. So, but this also I may can consider as a, a project. So then what is project? So before jumping over there and also the project management, I want to talk about a little bit of history of the project management. So those are some of the deliverables or output of the project long, long time ago. Huh? Pyramid of Mizer, then uh, Great Wall of China. Then again, maybe the Eiffel Tower, Ruan Valley Sad, uh, Joe the Allen, Tisa Weber. Those are all the deliverables, the output of projects. Then uh, we can see that project and project management is not a, a new concept. So which has a great history, almost like several thousand years ago. Uh, and also we have to accept that those are great deliverables of the project. Example still is questionable how these huge blocks were kept up to the top of the pyramid and make it photo seal. How our ancient kings of Sri Lanka built this Yodal having a very like a very small slope getting from the water from one position to another. Huge tanks like this. And also having a Ruan Valley Sire is like a very the whole equal arrangement everywhere. So these are all questionable still how they have made these things. So therefore, we have to accept that. So there's a great history for the project management as well. And also, though the way that they manage the projects are not primitive. I think it's far more beyond the today's even, the way of we are managing the projects. So then we have to accept that. The Misa people, they had their own way of managing the project. Then the Sri Lankan kings, they had their own way of managing the projects. Chinese people, they had their own way. France, they had their own way. Japanese, they had their own way, kind of. 
So the different people around the world, they have their own ways of managing the project. And also we had to accept that those are not primitive manners. But so with the globalization, the concept of global village today, we are all working together. Take an example of the Port City project where we are all working together. Chinese people are there, then the state people are there, the Russians or the Indians, Japanese all are here. So if they're going to manage a single project with their own flavors, it's a mess up. It's going to be a mess. So Japanese people try your day, Chinese people, they want to manage that way, Sri Lankan people want to manage it that way. Uh, so this way, and that. so it's going to be mess up the world. So therefore, this question was identified by this paper, PMI, Project Management is somewhere in the 90s, 50s. Uh, They've identified this problem in 1950s where we don't have a globally accepted methodology or a framework to manage the project. Then they develop a document, a framework, would I say, called the PMBOK, Project Management Body of Knowledge. So it has been a start again. From 1950 then 1960, they have put out their first document and the gradually evolving so then before august 2021 this version 6 was there now we do have the version 7 seventh edition likewise evolving document which is going to present us a framework which has been accepted by the world world especially north america portion of latin america then uh, uh, west africa then the portion of uh, uh, europe almost all around middle east countries and the asian region and also portion of uh, australia they all accepted this as a global framework and also this is a multidisciplinary. It can be a HR project, it can be a maybe a civil construction, it can be a software, it can be a marriage, it can be a procurement project, whatever. Irrespective of the discipline, this framework can be utilized. So then I'm going to answer the Suresh uh, question with that definition, which is presented by the PM Mock. A temporary end of wire which create a unique product or service or result we call a project. A temporary means there's a clear starting date and a clear end date for the project. There'll be no forever project. There's a clear starting date and end date and also it's unique. There'll be no exactly similar two projects in the world. Why I say that? Temporary does not mean that projects are in shorter duration. There can be one day project, one week project, one month project, 10 years project, 25 years project. Project period can be so much large. Temporary does not mean shorter duration. And also, temporary does not mean that deliverable is temporary because still we can see today the pyramids of missile. Therefore, those are not temporary. And also, uh, it's unique in the sense the project is delivering of this product. Therefore, clearly understand this project is a process of delivering that product. This product is going to have some sort of as features and the functions and all those things. Example, if a software. There are some features and functions. That's the deliverable. That's the so-called the output or simply called the deliverable. That particular deliverable will have sort of features and functions. Then the delivering that deliverable simply we call the managing a project. Therefore, we have to understand two aspects. There is a project scope and also product scope. Product is what comes out from the project, where we, what we deliver. And the whole process of delivering that, where complying to the rest of all the things are being called a project. Project is delivering such a deliverable according to the all set of requirement and the expectation set by the different uh, people around the project who are having interest over the project. We simply call them as a stakeholder. I think now we are clear. Project where we can see everywhere these deliverables: Southern Highway, Smart Airport, then Hambantar Coach, then again maybe the uh, Northern Highway, uh, or be uh, arranging the Olympic Games. All these are deliverables, the product which are coming from the services or result which are coming throughout the project. Then project is the process of delivering that result or a deliverable or a product which as you have been agreed with your stakeholders around the project. This is simply we can define as a project. Suresh? Yeah, yeah. great. So that's give a new insight about what, uh, how project uh, and what is really project. So it's more about, not about the end product, but product is result of this whole time bound uh, effort. That effort is a, can be a, in kind of project. And uh, apart that, it is now standardized because all the parties now in a one page, 
by this uh, international standards uh, using of uh, PMI uh, PM uh, book uh, method. So that's okay. Then now we have idea about the project. Okay, how now when we consider entrepreneurs, we are talking about building up businesses and new, giving new, uh, having new ideas and make a product and services to the market. So in that sense, uh, um, Mother, can you explain, can you give us insight how this project management really can uh, port or associate to the entrepreneurship? Yeah, Suresh, I think with the previous sort of series of uh, sessions that we had, probably you have a good idea about who has an entrepreneur. But for me, simply entrepreneur is a different version of a creator. So who would like to take a risk and capitalize the opportunity? While all sort of people going in a one direction, those are the people who are looking on the opposite side, where they are the people who can see opportunities and they will take a risk and try to capitalize that opportunity. That's simply the entrepreneur for me, but probably you may have your different definition. Then we talk about the project management and the entrepreneur, then who is entrepreneurial project manager. So I went through series of sources where PMI, then other sources, so to look at what they have defined as. Some people say that, the different breed of project managers. They are also project managers. I'll show clearly entrepreneurs are project managers. I'll give me a couple of minutes because they are running a, a project. They are always running a project. Therefore, these uh, entrepreneurs are definitely, they, they are uh, project managers. But it's a different breed in the sense uh, these people are uh, like, uh, uh, they are uh, into a different way of thinking, not ordinary project management, but they are thinking it's in a different way. So that's why we call it as a, a different breed of uh, different breed of uh, entrepreneurs, the project managers. And also having a niche with a project management discipline. They are also managing the uh, projects, but they have a, a, a small segment of such and also have a profound impact on those who uh, work with them. They can make an impact around the environment and also able to work in a great so they are working a gray, not clearly black or a white regions. They are they manage in the both. Like they also put their one foot on an operations management and one foot on a project management, and also think in a strategic strategic uh, flavor. So then this is what the, the PMI said on that. One of the uh, research on the PMI, the entrepreneurial PEM, the project management, then uses the science of project management, science of project management, and art of an art of the inherently understand his or her or stakeholders and their business goals to demonstrate that he or she will personally ensure that the project deliver real tangible business value to the stakeholders. So then they try to deliver a valid through their business using the project management tools and techniques of the knowledge. That's what I'm going to share with you today, how we can use these tools and techniques from the environment of the project management to deliver a business output or simply business value. The cost scope schedule should not be negatively impacted by political or interpersonal factors, or nor should it be negatively influenced by the create cho uh, choices need to deliver the real business value. How we can use these political factors then the interpersonal factors and shape up the cost and the scope and the schedule. Scope is the total amount of work that you're going to do. Cost is how much you're going to spend for that. And also the schedule is a given timeline for that. So then how are you going to make these three together? How is we going to make these triple constraints together? Huh? And again, while managing such, how are you going to deliver your project? The experience, the entrepreneurs, project managers bring soft skills to the project in a for purposefully way that execute the project in a fashion. So therefore, we want to understand this. Entrepreneur going to deliver a business. Then the process of delivering that business is a project. The project, there is a clear start date and a clear end date. But in a business, we can see a clear start date most of the time, but usually the end date is not defined in most of the case. But if you are serving in a client, if you're going to serve a client, or maybe if you're going to develop a software. So these are part and parcel of business. You have a business, then it's a software development business. 
or maybe consult as a business where are you going to consult your clients in that then you can define what is a business scope what am i going to do with this software delivery process what i'm going to do with this my particular client so what are the consultations that i'm going to do when i'm going to start my consultation process when i'm going to end this this what is a given timeline what is the total cost for me for that so what what amount that i'm going to charge from my client therefore even though it's within the business it's a simple project i'll give you a very nice example with next set of slides so then before jumping to that i want to give you a small idea about the project life cycle as suresh said so projects are temporary there is a clear start date and a clear end date in a project we do have a clear start date and a clear end date same in our life also we do have a clear start date and end date no example the birthday is the starting date then usually we are not celebrating the death day but uh, maybe our uh, relatives might going to not celebrate maybe memorize so then we also have a clear starting date and a clear ending date and along with that we have a very nice life cycle we were came to this world as a infants then we came kids or a child or maybe the teenagers then then the adult then the elderly and say goodbye then we have a nice set of phases in our life we are the infant phase kid phase teenager phase and the adult phase and the elderly phase some people example some of the teenagers they are going to say goodbye at the teenager age some people at the middle age they are going to say goodbye some people maybe spend the whole life and the elderly phase they are going to say goodbye same way in project also they are going to stop at different different phases so therefore in line with that this is a way that we can divide the project into different phases the first part we saw called the initiation uh this part we call the initiation and this part we saw called the planning phase this part we call the performing phase and this part we call the closing phase what we do at the initiation phase as soon as when we want to have a project uh, example i want to construct a new house a project Huh? i want to construct a new house for me it's a project when i as soon as when i get that trigger in my head as soon as when i get that trigger in my head what going to happen so then the project going to be start okay as soon as when i get that trigger in my head i'm going to start my project then what i'm going to do so i'm going to evaluate business cases then i'm going to look at what the best business case i'm far going away from this my previous example the construction of project when we look at the commercial buildings commercial projects what they going to do when we look at this kind of a commercial projects so they do this kind of a things where they going to uh, basically evaluate the project cases and they going to look at so how these uh, projects are going to work around huh? then uh, where i'm going to get the fund for this project what is the return from this project what are the objectives that i'm going to achieve from project what is the scope of the project what are including the project and what i'm going to exclude from the project understood then uh, what are the restrictions on the project what the legal framework within the project so what is the tentative time plan rough time plan your one year project two year project so what the rough scope of the project what is the rough a uh, uh, budget for the project all those things are going to be decided and happen in the initiation phase business case analysis evaluation identify the rough scope of the project identify the rough budget of the project identify the rough time plan of the project huh? then again what are the inclusions exclusions and basically the assumption that i'm going to make constraints limitation all those things are going to be discussed under this initiation phase then they going to appoint a project manager for this project and define his roles and responsibilities and document it and this document come as a, a project charter which i'm going to show you this is the birth certificate for the project this is a birth certificate because in front of law you can't uh, officially say that uh, or legally say that you were born unless otherwise if you don't have a birth certificate in your hand so same way uh, we not to give the official birth for the project we should have the project charter therefore at the initiation phase end of this initiation phase it's come the project charter will be there with all the information that i gave to you as a project chart then what going to happen at the uh, so called the planning phase planning phase this project charter will have all rough plans rough time plan rough budget rough scope and all those things will be going to convert as a, a detailed plan it's going to convert a detail detailed time plan detailed budget detailed scope management plan 
detail risk plan, detail procurement plan, detail communication plan. Likewise, it's going to convert into a, a complete set of 10 plans. Complete set of 10 plans where I'm going to convert this. Complete set of 10 plans I'm going to convert uh, this into the set of 10 plans. Complete 10 plans. Then those plans will be documented over there and it will be coming as a, a project management plan where you can see here. That's a quite a tedious project where a process where we want to convert those all rough plans into the so-called the uh, detailed plan. So then after the project management plans come to our hand, we're going to start execution. Then we're going to find the architect, get the design, then design it, go to the local authority, approve it, go to the bank, and we get the budget, the lawn, then excavate, then the foundation, then the structure, then the roofing, then the roof, the, the walling, the finishing, the tiling, all the stuff gonna happen here. There. And so then uh, here, what's gonna happen at the this phase of the this phase? The project manager will complete the, the project as per the agreed. Uh, piece of uh, features and functions, and they're going to say that project manager come and say to the client, say that, hey, I had done the project. So then the project manager and the client and or maybe representative going to inspect the project, whether they have done all what we had agreed. Number of door windows, the way that the tiling, way that the roofing, way that the painting, and all. so whether he has done all the things agreed over there. So then we're going to look at. Then what will happen? They inspect and going to accept. As soon as the client accepted the project, as he is happy with the way that the PM has done and the delivering of the whole scope of the project, it became accepted delivery. Then there's another phase. You may have a pro like a like a why why we should have a, a closing phase if the accept the deliverable has been accepted. So why we should have a closing phase? Because we want to release all the resources because it's a temporary journey. There's a starting and ending. So therefore, this is a, a temporary journey. So then. We want to uh, finish this and uh, we want to hand over all the resource that I use for completing this project because we are temporary. At the end, we have all of us, we have to say goodbye to the project. So therefore, we're going to hand over the tools, machines, vehicles, office spaces, human resources that we have been used in a project, evaluate their performances and we want to get them back into their original places. And also there's a very important thing because projects are unique. Every project we have a new thing to learn. Every project we do have a new things for us to learn. And also because the, every project is new, we have a learning curve. We have a learning curve. And also because of that, we have to uh, have some problems, issues. Sometimes we went wrong. We had some problems. We had some issues. So then what's going to happen along with that, where we have to uh, discuss among our uh, sort of people about the project, project learnings, our project learning uh, about the whole process. So where we went right, where we wrong, and we discuss those things. We call the project learning discussions and document those things, the lesson learned document uh, for the future use. And also we are, have to close our procurement because we have been get the service from the different different uh, vendors, suppliers. Then what's going to happen? They want to uh, uh, they want to uh, collect the money from us. We have signed some agreement with them. So then we want to close our business along with them according to the terms and conditions of the agreement. We have to settle the payments. We have to uh, deliver the uh, acceptance document and all those things. So this is what happened in the closing phase. So therefore, I, I want to spend this couple of minutes uh, to, to, to you to understand what is the so-called the project life cycle from initiation to the planning to the execution or performing to the closing. But there's a two things going to happen in parallelly at this performing phase. We are usual execution of work and also monitoring and control. Because, so we want to check the actual versus plan. Are we executing what exactly plan or something different? So if it is different, why this difference? So then the projects, the changes are inevitable. Later on, client may want to have an additional bathroom. He, want, he wants to uh, change the color of the painting, kind of. Therefore, changes are inevitable. Then there should be a way to monitor the execution work against the plan and also uh, managing these changes coming from there. So therefore, we want to run two things in parallel over there, so-called the monitoring and controlling and the execution. Therefore, so we can divide all sort of work that we do in a project into five groups. Huh? All sort of works that we do in a project, we can divide into five groups. 
some of the tasks that we are doing in a project somewhat going for the initiation phase some of the things are we are going in the project going for planning phase some of them are going for the performing or execution phase the execution group and some of them are going for the monitoring and uh, controlling group and some of them are going for the closing uh, so therefore i have divided all the work that we do in a project into five groups initiation related stuff planning related stuff execution related stuff monitoring and controlling related stuff and the closing stuff so this is a way that they are going to be related to each other initiation to the planning because we should have a project chart to run we want to have a comprehensive project management plan to run the execution then the monitoring and controlling will be monitor and control the execution and also if there are any kind of a change going to be happen the plan should be changed finally we want to give the deliverable at the closing so this is what simply called the project life cycle because i took that project life cycle because i want to relate this project life cycle into the uh, business life cycle also huh? so then um, any questions so far suresh Suresh? Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, that's a great insight. How project management uh, faces will, and what are these uh, those things? Uh, at the moment, some uh, uh, questions uh, here come. Uh, what about how these uh, different phases? As we said, uh, that I think you are next going to explain those point. How these phases? related to project uh, before that uh, as you explained in the beginning i i got an idea that as you said the whole business is a huge project and in that business you pointed out that each serving a customer can be looking at as a project and also making a product can be looking at as a project project so this is very important area that because we are trying to use these tools to our business so i think this will be very very important for all of us how these as a whole business uh, and part of them are considered as project because there is a contradiction uh, there is a little bit contradiction or you know, the challenging happen for example uh, when we consider about our whole business as a project then there are another parts of them as a project some parts uh, for example uh, just think we have developing a product several products sometimes we develop one product and start selling and de start developing another product sometimes we parallelly de start developing several products and sometimes we have lot of products now we are focusing on sales selling them meanwhile we are selling these products we are developing another part of product so it seems many many activities as a project entities are parallelly running and we cannot say which we we have to find out what phases you know, phases of these products uh, project management aspect of we are going on so i think you will if you can explain these things that will be help us to more organize our whole business and part of them uh, using these tools so that's yeah it. i think uh, the 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 mess up that i want to take now happen so we are as i said we can consider the whole business as a project and also there are going to be multiple project inside that so i'll come to the definition first which are which are going to show in this uh, uh, slide where we learn what is project project is a temporary endeavor which create a unique output then we can see even though the projects are not exactly similar each other even though the projects are not exactly similar each other but we can see some sort of a similarity between them example southern highway project is there outer circular highway project is there airport highway project is there northern highway project is there we know that those are not same 100% those are not same each other but we can see a similarity example uh, uh, all of them are highway projects all of them are using similar kind of raw material similar kind of techniques they are using so then don't you think that while we are having the project separately under the project managers if there is another person overlooking these all projects and share resources among them and share the knowledge know how experience among them and centrally monitoring and controlling them won't be a benefit for you so example if you are going to order the materials individually by each project this is a quite smaller quantity but if you are going to order that material as a bulk quantity for the whole set of projects then you have a higher bargaining power 
and different project managers will be experiencing different problems, issues, and all. If they can share that knowledge among the other project managers, won't it be a help for them to uh, ready for the problems that are coming in the future? And also, we not need to buy separate standalone softwares, project management tools for separate, separate, separate projects. But we may can get a one copy and we can have the like a, a shared version of such within the others. And also, maybe some other resource share example, we may not need to have a uh, one multiple project after project uh, highway architects yeah we may can have a set a simple set of highway architects and we can share those resources among the projects therefore people thought that rather than managing the project individually rather than managing the project individually they can manage project together by looking at the similarity so therefore they put similar projects together and manage them as a program that's the next stage of the project hierarchy where initial the projects, then they put similar projects together and they manage those projects as a program. In software industry, construction industry, uh, and all where uh, there are designation called program managers. Uh, while being the academic also, I'm a project program manager in my university because I'm undertaking a couple of construction projects, several billions of projects under me centrally manage those things. There are also designated program manager as well, in addition to the academic part. So then uh, it's an advantage for us to manage. Then when we look at a usual organization, see HR manager. Under HR manager, there can be multiple HR projects, new recruitment project, training and development project, implementation of HRIS project. Those are all HR projects. And also he's overlooking all these HR projects. Then one can't we consider HR manager, head of HR as a program manager, because under him, there are multiple HR projects. So therefore, what I'm talking, this, this concept, we can directly put into the businesses. End of the day, we put all the programs and the, some other projects together, and we define uh, another entity we call the portfolio. End of the day, when we look at an uh, organization, CEO is a portfolio manager, by the way. Because under him or she, uh, so we are uh, under him or her, there are going to be multiple programs, HR program, finance program, marketing program, kind of, there are going to be different programs. Under those head of marketing, head of HR, head of a finance, there are going to be multiple projects under there. Therefore, this hierarchy, this project portfolio program hierarchy, we can directly map with your organization. Therefore, any business, when there's a, a grown business, a stable business, where we can see there is such kind of arrangement inside. So I'll go another step further to explain how this project program portfolio, different version, different level of a projects are going to uh, map with the business culture, uh, business culture, business organization. Uh. So this is called the strategic project management alignment. Uh. So think about this example where in 2025, five is quite close, come on. 2025, um, the Manchi wants to be the number one confectionery company in Sri Lanka. That's their, that's their objective. I'll forget the word vision and mission a little bit away. Huh? Whatever so-called the vision would I say, whatever you can take it out. I say that's an objective, that's a strategic objective that they're going to achieve in a long run. Where in 2025, they want to be the number one confectionery company in Sri Lanka. Will it happen in overnight? Now, okay, the board of directors are around the company. They had like a look with No, it's not even going to happen like that. They should have a way of achieving that. They should have a way of achieving those objectives. So then they're going to define different paths to achieve this objective. Come on, there, up in 2025, Lanka, we have the one Rasa Kavi, they should have a way of doing that. This way of doing that, we saw called the strategy. Well, what are the ways that they can do? Okay, they thought that, okay, uh, for the next, when I say this 2022, next three years, we want to come up with new 30 number of biscuits. Every year, we are going to launch 10 number of new biscuits. So then launching a biscuit is a project. They define the scope, biscuit, take a address, the round, the kotu, the, which is a crunchy or a chocolate or a sweet or a spicy. 
Uh, then what is the machine that we're going to make that biscuit? Who are the people who are going to manufacture that business? Uh, then uh, where are the, how the ingredients are going to mix it out? It's a project. Then can't you see, there are going to be 30 number of projects going to be happening over there because they're going to deliver 30 number of new biscuits uh, for the next three years. And also they thought that, okay, we want to come up with, so we are only now doing, a, we are only into the business market. So, so biscuit market, we want to come up with a so-called Melbourne chocolate. Uh, Melbourne chocolate. So then they thought of, okay, we are coming with new six types of chocolates for the next three years. Then every year they are going to come up with a new chocolate. Then won't it be a six new set of projects? Then again, they thought that, okay, we are not in the cake business. Now we want to come into the cake business. So we'll come up with three new types of cakes for the next couple of years. So then Maliman thought that, okay, we are coming new three, uh, the cakes. Then they are opening a set of new, new three cake projects. And also they thought that's okay. So we want to sponsor at least one mega event in Sri Lanka to make their publicity. Uh, every three years, the three years, three mega is maybe Bakma Ulala or a maybe, a, maybe a cricket match. We don't know. So then it's also three new projects. They want to double their uh, dealer network. Uh, they want to double the size of dealer network. Another project. Then can't you see that we achieving that uh, objective, they have to do something. All the stuff that they're going to do, I said that. 30 number of new uh, biscuits, six number of new chocolates, three number of new cakes, sponsoring uh, three mega events and double the dealer network. Those are different, different, different projects. Then 30 number of new biscuits is a program because all of them are a biscuits project. Six number of chocolates is a program because all of them are chocolate projects. Then again, uh, uh, they say three number of cakes also a, a project, the program. And also a uh, new set of commercials, again, new program. These are all kind of programs. Then when we put all these programs together, it became a portfolio. Then can't you say that achieving the objective, we are executing a strategic plan in your organization, executing a strategic plan in organization to achieve their objectives is simply executing a portfolio simply executing a portfolio. Therefore, now you can put this together. Yeah? There'll be no business without project. There'll be no project without business. Uh, even though we learn those separately, okay, business management, business planning, business strategy formulation, crafting, and all those in one way, project management, scope management, time management, quality management, their way, there'll be no such a difference. Both of them are same. Within the business, projects are there. There will be no life for the project without business. Uh, therefore, these are very bond, very close bond is there. We are executing a business strategy is simply executing a portfolio. Therefore, without project management knowledge, you can't run a business. That's why we call entrepreneurial project managers. If the business person, entrepreneur, is well equipped with the project management knowledge and the tools and techniques, he can run his business very nicely. Because uh, when you look at the business planning, business strategy for crafting and all those, are, these are little bit, uh, would I say, little bit clay or a gray. Yeah, we can't look at the clear set of framework. But when you look at the project, we do have nice framework like PEM bar. Therefore, that's like a step-by-step, step, like, not methodology, but a framework where you can apply anywhere. Therefore, if the entrepreneur can learn the project management tools and techniques, he can very nicely utilize those things to plan their business, run their business, manage their business. That's the similarity or simply called the, not similarity, that's the relationship between the business strategy and the project or simply the project management versus business management. Did I ask you a question, Suresh? Yeah, exactly. Very interesting because uh, this gives much more elaboration how uh, projects and how they are categorized into groups and then those become more or less of portfolios uh, or the program uh, and programs, set of programs that lump to the uh, portfolio. So uh, where the CEO managing more or less the portfolio and each head of departments may run the programs uh, as a projects 
can be run by individual people. That's, that may the lay, I, I may suggest that would be a layout for entrepreneurial business. So this is very, very nicely mapping now, how project uh, management is man, mapping to the, uh, these uh, uh, entrepreneurial activities. Now, now we have to go further. Now we, as businesses, or oh, have uh, think about cost and risk of uh, uh, risking things. So those are associated with the businesses. So we we need to uh, think how this project management uh, give our insight about cost and risk of managing. So this will be a, one of the main challenging uh, tasks for entrepreneurs. So I think, uh, Mother, you can go ahead with those aspects if you. Thank you, Suresh. Thanks a lot. And also, there is a uh, question: the progress, uh, progressively elaboration. So I'll explain this uh, later at the end of the session. Uh, give me a couple of minutes to say. Yeah. Then, uh, when we look at a project, at the very beginning, the level of risk and the uncertainty is very high because we are going to uh, do this in the very first time. It's like you are driving your vehicle towards Jaffna by your own in the very first time. You don't know where the crops are, where the road is good or bad, where you can take the lunch and the dinner or a breakfast, where you can pump the fuel, if there's a tire punch, where you can repair, uh, where the, the elephant are crossing, you don't know anything about that, where to turn and all those things. Therefore, at the very beginning, just to just to let the Kalambu now, now we are driving towards uh, maybe uh, 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 Kiribati Jordan. Still, you don't know lots of stuff. So therefore, uh, it's like uh, you are driving your vehicle at the very first time towards Jaffna. So therefore, risk, uncertainty is very high because uncertainty is not knowing in the future what's going to happen. Because of that, there is a high risk. Huh? So then, while you are moving uh, forward, like Kiribati, uh, okay, now you are a little bit okay. Kadavata, a mm, little bit more okay. Then the uh, Amepusa, a little bit confident because you know what happened here and there. Dambulla, a little bit more confident. Habarana, 50 50 confident then towards Jaffna. Understood. Likewise, so at the very beginning, you have very high uncertainty. Therefore, you have a high risk. But while you're going through the project like this, your risk will be minimized. But cost of change is very high because, example, at the very beginning, if you want to have an additional bathroom, it just you erase your uh, plan and do additional bathroom. But maybe later on, once your structure has completed, it's a, you have to demolish and you have to reconstruct your uh, bathroom. And once you fully complete the building, where you have to demolish, you have to paint, you have to tile, you have to hell of a lot of stuff. Therefore, in a project, the risk and uncertainty will be going gradually down while you are progressing the project and the cost of changes are going up. Similar kind of thing, or maybe different in some other aspect, we can see in a project. Risk, actually a business, if you serving a customer, uh, you consider a, a simple piece of business as serving a customer, we are run on the same way, the risk will be go down once you're more familiarized with your customer. But if you are serving multiple customers, this won't happen like that. Then you can see multiple curves like this. You can see multiple curves like this. Understood? Because every step we are progressing to the business, you can see multiple curves like this. Huh? When you take a new business at every step, okay, a biscuit for the chocolate, again, new risk line. The biscuit, chocolate, the maybe uh, cake, another risk line. Therefore, in a, so even though we can see simply two curves in a uh, project, but when you go into the business where we have seen that there are multiple projects, repetitive projects are there. Therefore, we can see the multiple curves. So this is where that. So now you know the uh, project life cycle. We have learned the project life cycle here. Then this is the business uh, life cycle of phases. We are launching a product, then the growth of the product, then the uh, stakeout, then you're coming to the maturity of the product and also decline. So some, therefore you can see almost similar nature of the project life cycle here because launching of a product is a project. So therefore here they didn't come to the zero because still the sales can be there. So business may be not going to down like that as project. That's a difference. Business can be continued. So there's a not clear end, would I say. So that's the difference where you want to understand. So the profit and the cash also going in the same way, where there is a this like an initiation, then they may be actually this like a planning. Then this like uh, execution related, and this one phase is the uh, maturity. 
So this maturity phase will be dropped down a little, but this will continue in a business. But there's a little difference between the projects and the uh, uh, business over there. But the rest of other, we may can see a similarity over there. And also when we look at uh, lack of the level of risk, where you can see in a business, little bit different way at the initiation, what the level of risk is very high, same as projects here. And gradually this is going to be reduced because you start knowing the market. If you start knowing the, uh, 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 if you know, start knowing the your competitors, then substitute, um, then the way that the political environment happened, economical environment happened. So having those said and done, where your level of risk is going to be reduced gradually. So this is the way you can see the similarity of project life cycle, business phases, and the level of risk covering. That's why I, I took these things because you can, I want to, confirm that there is a hand in hand relationship between them so then uh, as per the suresh request i'll be jumping to the project management tools where we can use for business plan before that actually i skip one slide over there uh, this is the according to the pm box according to the pm box so they have identified different 10 knowledge areas simply i make and say like this any project manager should be competent in these areas he should be good in managing time. He or she good in managing the cost. He or she good in managing the human resource around him or her. And procurement, stakeholder, communication, risk, quality, manage the scope of the project. They should be very good in those areas. Those are called the 10 knowledge areas which have been defined by the PM box. So then I'll be discussing project management tools under these 10 knowledge areas, how we can use those things for our business management so different different areas of business i'm going to map with the different different knowledge areas in the project and along with that we're going to discuss how we can uh, combine those things for the uh, business plan first thing i'm going to take is scope management we have project we do have something called the scope management i'm not going to discuss it here because this is a different forum name. So therefore, I'll be taking how we can take the uh, essence of project scope management to manage your business. First of all, you want to identify what is your business opportunity. Simply, what is your objective? Same as initiation phase, where you want to identify what is your the business opportunity that you're going to uh, capitalize. It's an online business where I do have my online business right running right now. Uh, one of the uh, when I say local Udemy. Uh, we are we delivering uh, uh, online courses and uh, record courses through our the company GEI. So it's one opportunity that I saw within that uh, pandemic situation. Then is it the construction of a, a housing scheme or a condominium or maybe or maybe development of a software or maybe a would I say um, maybe uh, come up with a new uh, there is a eco-friendly uh, product. These are all different opportunities where we can see. So therefore, we want to identify the business opportunity first. Uh, we want to identify where are we heading to objectives. And along with that, we want to identify who are the business partners around that. Uh, so they are, so we call them as a, in project, we call them as a stakeholders. Who have an interest over the project or a, who can be impacted or the, who can make an impact on the project so here we call the business partners so then you may can have your partner then there are uh, uh, like a government authorities where you can run the business as you wish no? where you want to comply with these rules and regulations terms and conditions and all those things therefore there are uh, business uh, like uh, there are government organization then you have your competitors you have your customers you have your suppliers, you have your partners, then there are some economical, political uh, an environment around you. Then you want to understand who are the partners with you, the business. I'm not going to take the word stakeholder here, a partners. Then those partners have different, different, different kind of expectation from your business. Profit maximization and maybe delivering their product and services to you. And also maybe uh, uh, then the government authorities are looking forward for your compliance for them. Likewise, they have different needs, expectation, uh, requirement. They are expecting from your business. This is not what I'm talking about. They all have expectation. Example, 
uh, what do you call this Sri Lankan standard uh, SLS, whatever you call. So then they look forward, your business should be according to their standards. Then maybe company register looking from one other end and they're going to say that you want to comply with their rules and regulations. And also maybe uh, uh, your uh, supplier is going to look at the payment terms and conditions which are going to match with their requirement. Likewise, these all business partners are having different kind of a expectation, needs, requirement to be fulfilled from your business. Therefore, when you're going to set up your business, when you're going to identify your business core, you want to look at what they are looking for. Otherwise, you can't live with them once you run the business. Therefore, you want to identify their, first of all, you want to identify their, your business partners and look forward their needs and expectations, what they're looking forward, what they want, what they expect. Because if you are not going to fulfill those things through your business, you can't survive on the business. This is not a one-man show, no? Understood. And also, along with that, you want to set up what is your long-term goal after maybe down the line 10 years, where I want to be. So I do have my plan. So where maybe after 10 years down the line, I want to have a, some sort of a business with me, like a Udemy, local Udemy. Anyone can learn anything from my platform. Project management, operation management, machine learning, artificial intelligence, or maybe image processing, no, whatever. We are, uh, we, 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 we have to, uh, we have to uh, uh, fulfill all those requirements. So therefore, that's the business that I'm looking forward. That's the business that I'm looking forward. So then that's my end goal for like 10 years down the line. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to decompose. I'm going to chop it down my big goal into small, small, small pieces. So in project, we, we use something called the uh, project uh, breakdown structure, project breakdown structure. So for same. So take a one minute and look at this. I think uh, engineer Suresh uh, can take this part point. Ah, uh, he's back. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I just want to uh, have a look on that. Yeah. yeah. So then uh, here uh, where you can see, this is the tool that we use in a, a project. We are work breakdown structure. We are going to chop down of a big piece of work into small, small, small pieces. We're going to divide this into small, small pieces. Same way in a business, once you identify your long-term goal, where are you going to chop it down to small, small piece? I do have my own plan. Okay, then the first year, uh, I'm going to run all the programs with me and a couple of my colleagues who are known to me are the people who are going to put into this, my platform. So these are all related to the technical stuff, maybe like AI part, like artificial intelligence things, and also project management and the operations management part and supply chain management. So then this is what, what, what's the area that I'm working. But down the line, I want to expand. So then likewise, I do have a corporate plan with me for the next 10 years. So every year, what I'm going to do. So then first year, we actually get the money through the bank deposit. Second year, we integrated the pay here, payment gate, pay for such. Likewise, we want to divide our long-term goal into small, small, small pieces like this work breakdown structure arrangement where you're going to chop it down to small, small pieces. So then it's called the decompose your journey into the small steps. Then you want to identify what are the critical milestones in this journey? Uh, what are the critical milestones in this journey? So then, so when you want to pull this, that example, 2023, end of March, I'll be achieving this milestone. Uh, then 2023, end of September, I'm going to achieve this milestone. Therefore, you set up your agenda. Otherwise, you don't know where you're heading to. Otherwise, you don't know where you're heading to. Therefore, you set up your agenda, you set up your milestones, then you run the game. So this is what you're going to happen over there. And also, you detail your small steps. Example, okay, this is a one milestone you set up here. Would I say this is a one milestone? Then you divide this milestone into the sub sub levels like this. Then again, you further divide into the sub sub level. Then you know that example. This is uh, 2023. Uh, this is maybe 2023 uh, December milestone. 
then in order to reach this uh, december milestone what do you want to do on the uh, uh, maybe uh, january what do you want to do on the march what do you want to do on the end of uh, october what do you want to do on the uh, maybe uh, beginning of the december then you divide okay end of uh, october then uh, maybe example september what do you want to do then middle of september what do you want to do then uh, 15th of october what do you want to do nice you can divide all the stuff so then you have a track then you have a plan then you have a nicely defined the milestones and you have a time plan to reach your end business goal nicely with the short steps so i think so is it clear for the like is it clear for you all yeah it's very nicely clear and uh, one i think this is another related question for one i think i i would say that because if it it can be uh, come to this one uh, one is that uh, how to collect data which should be considered in a, in the past for new project uh, that's uh, okay. that's they're talking about if there is a past project how how to collect uh, data which should be considered in the past uh, for new project uh, seems some old project data to the new project and another one uh, very interesting that about cost uh, cost uh, that is can explain how is going uh, sand plantation i think some project specific project mean project that how can we do the costing part of for this i think this is project breakdown i think related to this project breakdown one because uh, she is asking about costing breakdown of that particular project sand plantation project so you may use that example also how to explain this project breakdown thing exactly so then uh, uh, once you chop down this uh, your long term goal into the small spaces like this like do something like a web breakdown structure then you can calculate to complete this mini milestone what is the cost in order to complete this mini milestone what is the cost end of the day once you calculate the cost of all these bottom of the boxes in the project management we call them as a uh, activities we call them as activities once you chop down to the small 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 activities and once you calculate the cost of each and every these pieces then you can simply develop your tentative budget for your business but in a business it's not easy for you to define a very should i say uh, accurate budget but having this where you can uh, mini milestones or i mean mini piece of work or may simply we call the activities in the uh, uh, project management where we can calculate the cost of or each of this and once you sum up where you can have the total cost of your business and also i'll explain the next step we call the time management uh, we call the time management because a, in a, a project now what you have done you identify the big span of your project and goal of your project and what you did you got chopped down these into small 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 pieces now you know the i did you have already identified the each step each piece of work and now you can see the relationship between both of that example okay uh, if i want to go to the international market in my business we are sell, selling the content if i don't have a payment gateway how they can pay for me therefore definitely i want to set up a international payment gateway for me before moving to the international market i want to set up a payment gateway for me before jumping to the international market so therefore that the step to step relationship first set up your business payment gateway payment gateway then go to the international market likewise once you chop it down your bis big business journey into the small small steps you want to understand step to step relationship so how this step going to relate to this step how this step going to be related to this step kind of where you want to understand the step to step relationship then after identifying this uh, step to step relationship where you want to sequence them you want to order them like where you can see actually part of a network diagram here in project we use something called the network diagram in project we call something called the network diagram so then you can develop a network diagram by understanding the activity to activity relationship or a step to step relationship and put it over there then complete uh, payment gateway commission payment gateway collect payments and have a trial in the local market then go to the international market three sm four small step this is the way uh, maybe get the legal approval set up the payment gateway trial the payment gateway in a local market go to the international market 
four steps you identify the relationship between step to step and sequence it where you can use a simple network diagram for that where you can put those things over there and look at and also you can look at what is a rough estimate duration because you can see okay in order to get the approval for a payment gate it will take somewhere around one month where you want to set up your business you want to show your business registration then you want to get approved it then again you want to uh, uh, get it uh, present to the bank open a bank account then go to maybe pay here uh, to the danica i don't know then you get the approval from them uh, then set up will be take one and a half months likewise for each and every small step where you want to identify what is the time taken for that so then looking at that you can look at what is the total duration and the initial target versus the predicted time will there are any uh, conflict between that so how we can align with that likewise then after you can align that to the your normal calendar huh? then you can come up with this kind of a gaan chart even though we call the project gaan chart i would prefer to say that in your case business gaan chart what are the things going to happen parallelly when you going to finish that what are the critical milestone how long will it take and the sequence of that from that i'll be jump to the costing where there is a question for the costing so then we are now you have the small pieces over there no small small pieces ah podi podi wale business ek athule karanna thiyena weda kaata idu payment gate ekak ganna eka ida passe partners la oya ganna eka fly ekak hadana eka tv commercial ekak daana eka these are all piece of small small work then you can calculate the cost of cost for each of the small steps ah for each and estimate the rough budget for each step small piece of work and monetary idea to reach the each steps how much you want the money then also your target is 20 uh, 2032 ten years plan 2020 uh, 2032 then the whole set of budget we are you have planned for now not going to spend on a single night me are going to project ekata one million is not nine million is other way that kara ne ne then you have a time plan here you have a time plan here gaan chart uh, business gaan chart would i say time plan and also you know the cost of this each activity now a uh, cost of each small step in your business you have an idea then you can see throughout the line so how much you going to spend in a cumulative manner in project we call this as a cumulative budget or a s curve or a time phase budget when and there how we going to spend the money uh, then uh, how much i'm going to spend today how much i'm going to stay through day after tomorrow how much i'm going to spend on maybe 31st of november or 30th of november kind and so and so forth so likewise we know and so when we have a concrete scope when we have a concrete time plan when we have a detailed budget in our business it's so easy for us to look at at every day day by day day by day how much i'm going to spend then after you can see the look at the uh, your funding am i how i'm going to fund my business from partners or selling shares in the stock chain stock market or maybe you going to get a bank loan then you can see when you have to have the funding from this bank when you want to find a new partner when you want to sell your shares because you can foresee your budget and it is not a static budget it's a time phase budget it's a time phase budget on and there how much you want to spend because now we are very well aware of what are the activities cost of each of these small steps and when that they happen they sequence calendar dates and then you can develop your cumulative budget line like this then again you may can use the earn value management concept like uh, schedule variance time variance so schedule variance cost variance schedule performance index uh, cost performance index all those things are in a different flavor actually this you can do a phd even like that where you can match those things together we are the project versus business how the project uh, the tools can magic with the business tools project performance indices how you can match with the for the uh, business performance indices likewise you are you can set up a similar way to manage yourself with the project and also you can categorize your budget cost for example in a project construction the cost for roofing cost for foundation cost for uh, finishing likewise you can categorize in a business a similar way you can categorize the marketing budget maybe the, uh, the under that promotion budget like online promotion tv commercials are uh, they recruiting and salaries for the marketing people likewise you can budget then again the warehouse cost warehouse operation cost we are can categorize likewise in here also you can categorize your the cost into different different categories so this is the way how you can 
use the project management tool for you to develop your time phase budget we are uh, budget with the timeline calendar how are you going to spend so did i answer your question uh, suresh and that particular uh, uh, participant are you happy with my answer uh, yes, mother. It seems uh, is uh, okay uh, because I replied and and uh, that's now we come to a good point. Uh, uh, can we have a small break like this? Uh, let me summarize somewhat we have learned up to now because another few slides we have to go. Not much more, but very important slides. Up to now, uh, we have talked about project and set of projects which we can say as a programs. And then those set of programs, which, which programs are more in a particular single area, just like marketing or product development or in a business kind of point. And these programs, a lot of programs come together as a portfolio. So this create whole business. So this is what we up to now we get. And however, as it says, if you want to eat an elephant, you have to, break it and eat by part by part. Similarly, whole business as a portfolio of many programs and many projects, each project can be break down into different areas like work uh, breakdown structure, as you said, each project can do the breakdown and then we can uh, find uh, what are the time plans of each activities and what are the cost for each of these activities. And we can, as come to this slide, we can say each cost and what at what time of, of the business it will occur. And then we can accumulate those cost of project by project to the program cost and the whole portfolio or the whole business cost. And we can, this will be very useful, uh, this tool, if we are going to apply for a loan and we can make a, project, a good business plan, if we can put these kind of breakdown this, certainly the, we will have more chance to approve our loan uh, because it's more elaborate and it give all the areas. I think the next, uh, uh, next part also very important. Uh, if we are talking about, uh, we want to means about getting about the loans or investments because we, we don't want to just want to present them the cost and breakdown of project activities and timeline, but all the business, any investment lies about risk. And we have to analyze those and should put into the project plan or the business plan in order to get a good investors or attract uh, banks to in, give us loans. So uh, I think mother, you can elaborate in that part next. Before that, oh, I need a few seconds to give, give some information to our members. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have many more members. So uh, this is, uh, we are, today we have, workshop session. These kind of workshops give you more tools to have your entrepreneurial activities. Apart that, we will have another set of sessions about review the journey. That session will give you more insight uh, about uh, the business people who the successful entrepreneurs. We will uh, very soon, every twice, a, every two months, once or two months, we will hold this a review of journey uh, uh, session also. And apart that, this workshop sessions, as today we are about project management tools and how we can use them to entrepreneurship. And we are looking for doing several other workshops about develop your skills to uh, improve your um, uh, entrepreneurial skills. And apart that, uh, we will have entrepreneurial incubator program. Uh, that is a continuous professional development program uh, that you whole bunch of uh, skills, set of skills in one, one go. And that will associate with the um, in, uh, entrepreneurship bootcamp. Uh, those two countries, professional development and bootcamp will come annually. So that uh, you can expect in coming uh, months. Uh, we will announce that in coming months, you can subscribe for that also. And uh, for getting to know what are the next activities, all of you are welcome. Uh, to join our uh, social media platforms. We have Facebook platform and also WhatsApp group. Uh, if you can uh, 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 just send on the chat, uh, what are the FB link? 
and also you can uh, give you a and also email you can send your details to email uh, your phone number then we will add you to the whatsapp group also so uh, just we will put that uh, on the chat and that's how we are going to uh, help you and give we are going to provide you more more tools and more skills uh, for being as a successful entrepreneur in engineering uh, career engineering entrepreneur so uh, you will get that uh, information very in uh, in due course so be contact with us uh, be touch with us in facebook page as well as put your uh, uh, and put your uh, contact number onto our email or whatsapp uh, facebook inbox so we will add you to the whatsapp group also uh, so madhava as we uh, discuss now we know up to the cost but what about risk and how we can prepare good business plan or good business uh, aspect from the project management how we can analyze risk and go ahead yeah actually suresh uh, projects also we do have a risk because projects are unique where every new project is a new uh, era or other new set of steps therefore as i said if you are driving you on first time to the jackna by you on you have a risk because i'm said same way the business also we do have a risk then uh, since the time is limiting i'll be giving you the essence of this so what you want to do this are all when i'm backing from the project management risk management area we are first of all in a business try your best to identify the all the business risk as much as possible where you can't do it 100% understood you can't do it 100% but try your best to identify the this risk that you can see at the very beginning try your best you can refer internet you can see the case studies you can uh, have a chat with your colleagues you can have a chat with your experts huh? similar business where you can look at and try your best to identify the uh, uh, the potential risk that your business can have and also do a swot analysis for you strength weaknesses opportunities and threats so mainly you look at what are your weaknesses and threats for the negative risk and the strength and the opportunities for your positive risk but i am not going to differentiate the positive and the negative risk right now since the time is limiting for us so then first of all identify those two aspect of that then what you can be so you try to estimate the probability of that particular risk going to be happen so how probable that risk is going to be happen for us and also if that particular risk going to be happen what is the severity of that example tsunami is very low probability tsunami is very low probability but impact is huge huh? then uh, would i say the flooding is very really uh, high probability but impact is not as that much of the tsunami likewise try to identify the probability and the impact of the each and every risk that you have identified then you give a marking scheme for that hmm? example probability starting from 0 to 1 then give a, the value of probability impact you make a rate for 1 to 10 the one for most like a lowest impact and 10 for the most highest impact then once you identify a risk calculate the probability of such and calculate the impact of such multiply them then by looking at the number where you can categorize your risk like low risk medium risk high risk kind of where you can categorize and by categorizing them if you have a, a very high risk very important risk you are you can go for a quantitative risk analysis if that particular risk happen what is the impact for the business in terms of time in terms of cost and all those things but a huge cost for that where you going to uh, calculate the quantitative risk assessment so so far what i explained is a qualitative risk assessment where you categorize the risk by after identifying the probability and the impact then do categorize them now you have a very good idea about the uh, risk and you make and develop a risk breakdown structure like work breakdown structure to different different categories and you make and prepare for same you make and prepare for same where you can develop some responses to the technical word coming behind that where you can prepare for such we are you can develop the responses if that risk happen this is what i'm going to do if that risk happen this is what i'm going to do is that risk happen this is what i'm going to do so i'm going to insure us my warehouse because there's a high probability of getting fire and also huge impact therefore i'm going to insure my uh, warehouse that's a transferring your risk to someone else likewise there are many mechanical in the project avoiding mitigate transfer and leave it that kind of so then likewise 
prepare your responses for the, the risks that are coming for you. And also, if you need, you can go for the quantitative phase. Example, if that particular risk is happened, what will be the impact of that in rupees and uh, cents as well as the time impact of such. This is called the quantitative risk. This is way that we can, how we can use our project management tools to manage the business risk. And also, it's very important where you want to identify stakeholders. Where I said that those are the business partners. Now, I actually explained this where your partners, business partners, shareholders, then the, your suppliers, then the legal authorities, then again, uh, uh, maybe uh, your uh, uh, competitors, then the, uh, the like authorities, kind of where you identify all the stakeholders, so called the business partners. Analyze them. Some of them are positively support. Some of them are negatively support. Some of them are having a high interest over your business. Some of them are having a low interest over your business. Some of them are very powerful. Some of them are low powerful. Kind of where yeah, you can do this power, the interest versus pro, the uh, um, power versus interest matrices. Kind of there are large amount of tools where you can use. Using them where you can analyze your stakeholders, or the business partners, and develop the strategies to get their help. How I'm going to get the help from the uh, uh, this government authority? How I'm going to get the help from this my supplier? How I'm going to minimize the impact coming from my competitors? Likewise, analyze them and develop strategies to deal with them. How are you going to get the maximum support from them to achieve your business objective and get them effectively involved with your business? What do you mean by the effective involvement? We are trying to get their support to achieve your business objective. This is simply we call the effective engagement. This is we call the effective engagement. This is how where we can use stakeholder management tools to manage your business partners. Very important thing. You are is not the only person in your business. You have many people work with you called the human resources around you. So then you can't hire the right human resource over a night where you have to identify your the future business team at the very beginning. So therefore, the very first when you set up your business idea on board, try to identify along with your business scope, along with your business timeline, along with your final target goal, achieving that, along with your sub milestone where we have identified in your WBS work breakdown structure, Identify the business team members where you want. Uh, work breakdown structure, you give the small, small pieces. Then to fulfill those pieces, who are the people should be with you. Then identify the required human resources for your project at the very beginning. And also then you plan, how, so when you need them, because the very first day you don't need all of them, then how are you going to pay their salaries? Then by looking at your timeline, when you're looking at your pro, uh, business done chart, uh, this network diagram, try to identify when and where you want to hire them. How are they all warning? Then, you know, well in advance, try to identify how you're going to find them. Uh, through interviews, through known contacts, or maybe through uh, Facebook or through LinkedIn, how are you going to find them? And after finding them, how are you going to recruit them? How much that you're going to pay for them? They are packaged. You want to plan in the very beginning as we did the we did in the project management and also how are you going to develop them continuous development how are we going to develop my people and also how, what are the strategies for me to develop my uh, good human resource and retain those with them end of till end of the project or until end of the business uh, how they are going to have a competent loyal employees for me you want to plan and get them effectively involved with your business to deliver their highest capability for you to support to get their uh, support to achieve your business object. And also, it's very important for you to have a very strong communication channels within your business. So this is not like a project communication. You have online communication, social media, then the maybe SEO, then a blog, then the TV, radio, paper media, posters, large amount of advertising, commercial, and also supply to supply communication, within the organization communication, business process, project progress communication, plan strategy execution, progress communication, uh, person to person operational level communication, 
hell of a lot of type of communications are there. Don't wait until you put your boat on the water. We will advance before putting on the boat or the water. Please try to identify all the communication needs that you want to have in your business. Person to person, department to department, within the organization, outside the organization, marketing channel, supply uh, management relationship, supply chain management related communication, all the stuff. And identify the team needs for same and set up your business communication channel and always make them live. So keep in mind that not for the project, but also for the business, poor communication will ruin your business live projects. Therefore, make sure that you will be having a, a good communication. And also in the project we call the uh, procurement management. I want to check it at a supply chain management. So then you can't run your business by your own. There are many suppliers. Please wait until, don't wait until to run the business and identify the suppliers. Before jumping to there, identify all the suppliers who are going to supply. Some example for me, uh, Basha Lanka or a pay here supplying me the payment gateway support. Then I do have a couple of uh, web, uh, web page developers and the uh, host, uh, hosting people who are going to provide me supply. I have many uh, content providers and the lecturers who are going to provide the content for me. I have a hired third party call center. They are giving the support for me. Likewise, these are all my suppliers. Then I want to identify them in very, very well in advance. And also I want to put the right contract between them. I don't want to pay 100,000 rupees for my event of web hosting person. I don't want to pay 25% commission for the pay here. I don't want to pay uh, to 50 rupees for a minute in my, uh, 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 what is so called the uh, call center, where I want to identify the right figures, put the contract in table, identify the right terms and conditions in favor of my business, and identify the suppliers, analyze them, and develop strategies to have the alliance with them, strategic alliance with them, where both people should win. In Sri Lanka, where from this partnership should be strategic and sustainable, where from this deal, you also want to win, I also want to win. You also want to gain something, I also want to gain something. Therefore, make a strategic alliance. Put the right type of contract between you and the suppliers and read carefully the terms and conditions and make it sustain. Okay, this is all about uh, the things that I want to uh, deliver to you. Uh, two minutes prior to the time, I was able to deliver the stuff that I want to deliver you. Now it's time for a uh, question and answer session. I think there are many questions. I Some of them I have answers. Uh, what is the Thank meaning you. of progress in liberation? So could I go to the questions or so, uh, anything else that Suresh want to go ahead? Uh, no, I, I I want to put some questions. Okay, one question they ask is uh, as you explain. Yeah, if you can explain summarize the, the questions of... and give it to me, it's quite convenient for me. Yeah. Yes, that's what I am going to do. So one by one, we will have around five questions. Uh, some are already answered. So let me answer uh, ask one first question to your point. Explain the importance of how far quality matters in risk management. Uh, that's yes. what they uh, yeah actually i didn't get the quality into the today's discussion because a vast area quality will give a huge risk because if you manage the quality then there will be a risk in your cost you can gain from the quality if you're not going to manage the quality then there's a risk because of that so then first of all where you want to set your quality standard understood sorry this is not any discrimination this is not any discrimination but we are not expecting the uh, taste and the nutrition and the hygiene factors of a uh, level roti, vegetable roti from the small shop next in the by road versus where we are expecting from the maybe fab or a maybe somewhere else. Understood. quality deliver body card taking. Then you want to look at what is the level of quality that you're going to pitch. This also you want to identify at the very beginning of the uh, project. So then you can put up the right quality assurance process and the quality control process. It's a huge area. And also, if you are not managing the quality in a right way, there will be an impact to the risk 
because you can lose you can got to lose your customers you can dilute your market image you are going to lose your views of business uh, so therefore yes there will be direct relationship between the quality and the risk if you are not managing the quality to the level that you agree keep in mind that to the level that you agree there is a problem but don't try to go play go beyond that because customers are not willing to pay for you unless otherwise it will be going to give you a long term impact yes there will be a direct relationship like that so suresh suresh you are mute i think suresh you are mute i think sorry uh good thanks and then uh, another question explain what is the agile simply and how to use agile to the project agile project management uh, actually not a new concept in the even like a uh, project management version 6 book also talked about agile actually agile came into the uh, especially into the software industry because uh, especially the software industry the scope is great, always changing when when the new feature comes client want that feature also in your project so then uh, if the client going to be wait until the project going to be complete is never ending process we are also uh, uh the developer also can't get any money uh, because you didn't complete the work because it's always changing as a solution for that they came up with agile where they divide the big project into small small pieces and those small pieces they consider as a uh small project and complete that deliver and build complete that deliver and build that's a very like a in very plain language that i can tell you and also in be in, inside that there's a scrum management sprinklers kind of detailed discussions are there simply i can say that agile is like a set of interrelated small 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 project deliver in order to happy make you make your customer happy and also you happy because you deliver complete the feature collect the money complete the feature collect the money then the scope boundaries are uh, very much relax Suresh muted. Suresh, I'm muted. Another another question. Very interesting question. Uh, what is the importance of having feasibility studies for a project, and how can we identify the risk before uh, commencing the project for novel project? Are the two questions one party? Very interesting. Importance yeah. of feasibility studies. Exactly. We want to do a feasibility study. Example, I'll take like that. So I have. Uh, would I say I have uh, five million in my pocket now? Okay, five million in my pocket, or maybe ten million in my pocket. Then I am thinking that's the only sort of money that I have. Now I am thinking I want to build twenty-story building uh, with uh, maybe sixty apartments. Twenty-story building. So then I want to look at is it feasible because of the country, the state of the country, and uh, because of the amount of money, the capital that I have. so likewise then i want to look at whether i may can get the funding from someone else i may can find the uh, uh, investors somewhere else or the bank will be fund for me likewise want to the feasibility it's going to be happen or not it going to be happen or not so then if it sounds for example if simply in sri lanka if you think okay we want to develop a, a rocket to the uh, maybe uh, Look, we are ever. Ah, we want to develop a rocket to the moon. Would I say? Can we do that at the right now? We can't do, no, because we don't have the right technology with us. Especially, we don't have the dollars with us right now. Ah, then how we can do that? So likewise, feasibility study is very important. Actually, the in my explanation, this business case is also include the feasibility study. A business case also like a business proposal also. Uh, having the uh, in, uh, essence of the feasibility study it's very important that you want to do a feasibility study and the second question how we can do a risk analysis for the completely novel project in that case where you can't do a 100% risk analysis because you don't know what going to happen but you can read the literature you can look at the similar projects you can hire some experts and up to some extent up to some extent where you can identify potential risk but you don't know the so all this example you think like that you going to plant a you going no you going to plant a uh, human inside a uh, cow ha hara ela denegge bade babe khadanne ana ha mona hari oy genetically mona mona hari karala so very first time we don't know what going to happen what complications going to be happen ha lame an attack ekke id api danne so then but up to some extent we can estimate the risk we can look at the risk but not 100% because this is the very first time we are going to in business also same who who else i mean who who decided and also who who had an idea 
2019 December or uh, uh, November, this hello hello come to the the world. Maybe Jarhan the day, he will come to the world. Then in the business project also, we do have these problems. But it's a very, very narrow project. This The impact of such is very high. Yeah, another question pop up, uh, very related to risking, risk part. Uh, when yeah. business comes to its maturity, will there be any risk at some point? I think you exactly. do something about yes. it. Yeah, yeah. Some people, example, I'll take a couple of cases. This is maybe not 100% right. Huh? Maybe not 100% right, but for my understanding. See some of the businesses in Sri Lanka. Uh, example, uh, this Siddha labor business. So it came to the maturity, but not like improving further. Understood. Because it's now a little bit, little bit in a flat terrain. And also not even flat terrain, now it's a little bit going down. Huh? Then uh, Harish Chandra. Now in a flat layer. We are not going move up. So therefore, if we are not continuously developing ourselves, if we are not adopting our products and services to the new business, because customer is the most complicated person. Lemon puff with other curry puff, choco puff, cheese puff, mango puff, arak puff, may puff, apple puff. Why? Customer is so complicated today. There is a person who don't like to have the sweetness, but he likes the crunchiness of the puffer. Uh, therefore, maybe the spicy puff or a curry puff came to the plate. Now he can he is so happy because I can taste the spiciness along with the puff. So likewise, you want to come up with new ideas. Otherwise, you are in trouble. In the maturity also, you can trouble. Then Maranda Bata said put any. Then I'm in the other end. Hey, so you want to think in a different way. Even when the maturity state, you want to go. This is called the creative destruction. Understood. Where you want to destruct one place and jump into the next. Huh? Then your computers will be in a blanket way. So therefore, even you have the maturity, you want to think new. You want to come up with a new product, new NPD. And also you want to think new, a new way to serve your customers. Look at how you can uh, capture the customers where you're not being to the previous. So therefore, you want to adapt to the new environment. You want to innovate every, uh, 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 always. You want to look at what are the new technologies comes. Example, so today we have the iPhones in our hand, then uh, we are using WhatsApp, then we are using now. Every organization now, almost all organized, they have a Facebook page. They have a uh, maybe web page, Twitter account, then the WhatsApp, different stuff. So then the like all days we have spent several millions to get the customer feedback. Today, maybe 100 rupees, you can get the large number of feedbacks from the Facebook. If you are not adapting to such, you can't sustain on the business. Therefore, innovativeness, then the new way of thinking, new product development, essential. Otherwise, you are in risk, even you are at the maturity level. Okay, I think uh, now we come to the end of the session. Uh, one question, uh, this may be answered offline and we will share with the people. Uh, what is the current PM book version? Share some yeah. details in training sessions and training courses available. So uh, I think you can briefly tell and uh, if you, you can share some documents, uh, yeah. people who can ask this question on our Facebook, messaging on our Facebook, we'll share with them those information. Yeah, uh, uh, till around uh, uh, August 2021. So uh, the PM book version six was there and uh, from five to six, there was not a drastic change, but from six to seven, there is a sizable change. The way that they have, uh, uh, arrange the content in a different order. Then I, I saw a question also, she or he had done 5 point, uh, version 5 and she wanted to sit for the exam. Then you want to prepare for the 7. Then uh, the questions are coming from 7. I think the exam starting from uh, November or maybe 2021, 20, December are based on the version 7. I'll give you the exact information. Then simply what you can do, you can, there are some uh, sessions arranged in the uh, some organization where slit we do have then again the pms we do have then we are uh, colombo pmi colombo chapter we do have and also isl also we had i don't know how it's running with the shanaga nowadays so then you can go for the four, uh, 35 hours of preparation then you can apply for the exam so now you want to go with the seventh edition 
Uh, mother, you can share those information in detail, then we can yes, share. Yes, yes, I'll also share information in detail. That will be easy for you. And I think we should, uh, we can wind up the successful session today. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Mother Hera. Thank you very much for you giving your uh, time and also the nice elaboration with the examples and how it, it is nicely mapped to the uh, code to the uh, entrepreneurship uh, score. So thank you very much for giving your valuable time and uh, in, uh, experience. And also I would like to thank all the participants who, uh, who were more than 100 uh, over there. And now they are all the most of the participants are till end of the time and their active involvements, questioning and active involvement. Thank you very much for all of you for participating. And also I, I have, you know, I'm giving very much thanks for IESL publication division who are preparing all the communication materials and nicely giving us Zoom facility without interruptions and very nicely managed. So I highly appreciate their work. And also uh, professional affairs committee, uh, uh, these all the uh, things happening because of their work who are front only myself and Jasmine showing, but there are many people who do the hard work behind the picture. Uh, so engineer Saman and engineer Chanaka, there are many. So uh, uh, I would like to thanks for professional com committee on behalf of this session and also the uh, entrepreneurship forum um, and special thanks to Jasmine who uh, for, for him, give the um, much help from the back and giving summarize the, uh, all the questions and things that very much helped to success this event. And uh, thanks again, uh, engineer Madhahira and thank you very much. Uh, for your time. Thank you very much, Suresh. Thank you very much, uh, Jasmine. And thank you very much, ISL, giving me the opportunity to share uh, my thoughts. Thank you very much. And I also love to be with you in the future as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Good. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.